Welcome to our presentation on cloud computing for regulated life science environments. Many regulated companies that we talk to are concerned about moving to cloud computing with their intellectual property, data, and quality system applications. We believe that with the right precautions and validation, cloud computing can be safe, secure, and compliant in our regulated environments. Cloud computing as a model can fit the Globio business goal of making regulatory compliance efficient, more cost effective, and less risky. Our presenter, Leo Persky, will explain how that is possible. Leo has expertise and experience in IT, computer system validation, and pharmaceutical and medical device validation of all sorts. The topics that we will be discussing will be presented in four parts. The first part is characteristics of cloud computing. The second part will be considering whether to use cloud computing. The third part will be about what you should find out about your provider before you engage them. And the fourth part will be cloud computing issues and their influence on validation. So I think I'll turn it over to Leo and I hope you enjoy the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Patty, and welcome, everybody. To begin, we're going to start with the characteristics of cloud computing. I want to talk about what cloud actually means and what it means to different people and the way that we're going to define it for the purpose of this presentation. In general, uh, cloud computing services is uh, just an umbrella term for a number of virtual and managed technology services. And what that means is, uh, for the most part, you're basically outsourcing your IT department to another company. They're doing all the work for you. And who you outsource it to is a cloud service provider, or a CSP as we're going to call them uh, throughout the presentation. A CSP can be any provider of any service. Uh, some common examples are um, Amazon Web Services, uh, Gmail, uh, companies like that. Let's take Gmail, for example. What Gmail can do is uh, provide you as the consumer a service of hosting your email on their servers. They take care of uh, all the storage, uh, all the maintenance, and you in turn get to access their application through an online system. So let's define what cloud actually means. The National Institute of Standards and Technology has uh, a nice definition. It actually makes a lot of sense. And in later slides, we're going to talk about uh, specific characteristics that define cloud computing. For now, we can just focus on the fact that the IT services are hosted by a provider and are accessed over the internet. That's really the foundation of the idea of cloud computing. In order to achieve a lot of the cost savings that cloud computing brings, um, we have to rely on sharing, which means that uh, you as a consumer are most likely going to be sharing resources with either another consumer or maybe another department in your company or somebody else, but the point is you're going to be sharing. But what is it that you're sharing? Well, it's the backend infrastructure for the most part. Backend infrastructure includes things like firewalls, uh, routers, uh, web servers, email servers, uh, even things like uh, ventilation systems and physical security. It's things that you as a consumer typically don't interact with, but they are required to make everything run and uh, facilitate communication among systems. Sharing of resources or the backend infrastructure is uh, sometimes a foreign concept to some people, but it's really not that foreign. We share infrastructures with others every single day. Uh, a prime example is the power grid, where everybody has access to it, but you only pay for what you get. You only use it when you need it, and you don't get charged anything unless you use some of it. And we have some other good examples here. For example, telephone networks, uh, sewage systems, trash pickup service, public transportation. Uh, even mail delivery service. These are things that are existent, but you only pay for them when you need them.
So now let's get into some of the details uh, about what specific characteristics really define cloud technology. We have the five characteristics listed here, and we're going to go into each one of them in a little more detail so we can discuss them. Um, the five are on-demand self-service, broad network access, resource pooling, rapid elasticity, and measured service. On-demand self-service is your ability as the consumer to provision computing capabilities whenever you need them. Uh, you don't need to have uh, any human interaction. You do not need to call the support desk to do anything. You can basically uh, provision services for yourself at the push of a button. And this ability to deploy resources uh, so quickly and so easily, uh, a lot of times make it, makes it seem like the capabilities are endless, are unlimited. So even if you look at uh, some of the pricing models of some of the cloud service providers, they will tell you how much you have to pay per gigabyte or per gigabit of data per second, but I don't think any of them really list any kind of maximum, which makes it appear that you can get whatever you want as long as you're willing to pay for it. Of course, we know that there are limits to everything, but the point is that the appearance of uh, not having obstacles in your way and not having any limits is there. Next, we have broad network access. And what this means is that if you have a cloud technology or a cloud service that you need to access, you should be able to access it from anywhere in the world as long as you have an internet connection. It should be platform dependent. It should be browser independent. The whole idea is that you can access it from anywhere, anytime you want. Resource pooling goes back to the idea of sharing, where um, the, the physical resources and the logical resources of the service provider are pooled together and are shared by multiple customers. And what I mean when I say uh, multiple customers, it doesn't necessarily mean uh, several organizations sharing the same resources. You could have a private cloud, which we'll talk about later, and departments within your own company could be sharing the resources. Resource pooling is accomplished by the concept of virtualization, and most companies have a virtualized environment within their um, IT departments or within their data centers. So the idea and use of virtualization is nothing new. It's been around for a long time and it's been well tested, and there's actually some really cool tools out there and really cool technology. We'll talk about some of it later on. Rapid elasticity is the ability to very quickly provision resources and at the same time uh, having the ability or the option to scale down the amount of resources that you're using. This again feeds into that uh, illusion or appearance of limitless capabilities, uh, limitless resources. Where rapid elasticity comes in handy a lot of times is for small businesses that uh, without it simply wouldn't have the ability to support uh, an influx of orders or uh, brand new business. With this capability, a startup company, for example, can go from zero customers to 100,000 customers overnight and not miss a beat. And finally, we have the concept of measured service or metered service. Now, what this means is that everything you do, all of the resources that you use are monitored and you can very accurately say exactly how much you've used. And this is what allows you to only pay for the resources that you're using. So to quickly summarize, these are the five main characteristics of cloud computing. And I would say that for any cloud technology to be considered a true cloud technology, it must meet each of these five characteristics. Now I want to very quickly go over the three main service models that are often associated with uh, cloud technology. Now, it's very important to remember that the five characteristics that we just talked about are still applicable to each one of these service models. The models are uh, software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service. And we'll talk about each one of them really briefly. Software as a service is a model where a cloud service provider um, allows you as a consumer to access their online application through a browser usually. With this model, you as the consumer have very little control over the uh, backend infrastructure and things like the operating system that your application is running on, um, what platform it's running on, uh, the servers that are being used, the antivirus protection that's running in the background, backup software, things like that. Those are usually taken care of by the provider. You as a consumer, though, do retain uh, control over your data, and ideally only you should be able to access that data. 
Platform as a service is a lot of time used by developers, and what this allows you to do is to deploy your application or any other application you may have purchased onto a platform. And when I say platform, a lot of times uh, what that translates into is a deployment environment on the web. Uh, so if you have a web application, for example, written in PHP or ASP or Ruby or anything like that, uh, you could go to a uh, platform as a service provider and they will provide you everything you need to run that application without you having to worry about uh, any of the middleware, the servers, um, the operating system, the database management system, any of that. Infrastructure as a service allows you as the consumer to retain most of the control over your environment. What the CSP provides you is the data storage capabilities, uh, network connectivity, server hardware, but you as the consumer retain all control over uh, what operating system you're deploying on it, and then everything that you put on top of it, like databases, uh, middleware, um, any applications you deploy on top of it, you still have full control over that. And this control is very important, especially in a regulated environment that we have to operate in. And we will talk about this more in depth in later parts of this presentation. So to quickly summarize, we just went over the three main service models of cloud computing, uh, software, platform, and infrastructure. And what sometimes you'll hear referred to as is the SPI model. This chart here uh, summarizes basically what the three service models are and uh, what you get with one versus the other. And as you can see here, with all models, you do retain control over your data. But as you go from one model to another, you can see that you uh, give up some responsibility but at the same time, you're losing some control. Any of the service models that we just talked about can be deployed different ways. And uh, there are four deployment models, private, public, community, and hybrid. And we're going to talk about each one of them briefly uh, and, and describe how they're different from one another. Private clouds are dedicated to a single enterprise or a single organization or entity. A private cloud can be managed by the organization itself or by a third party, which would be the cloud service provider, and it can exist on or off premises. Private clouds are most closely related to uh, what most people are used to seeing in their own data centers. In fact, a lot of organizations that are running uh, virtualized environments inside their data centers probably have something that very closely resembles a private cloud, um, whether they've classified it that way or not. Public clouds are what most people are used to seeing offered by vendors like Amazon and Rackspace. And these services are offered by cloud service providers to the general public. And uh, here we'll see the resources are shared amongst consumers. Public clouds are inherently uh, more dangerous in terms of computer security. And uh, a lot of times this is not a good solution for a regulated company, especially when you're storing regulated data um, in the cloud. Community clouds are essentially private clouds that are shared among several entities. Where you will commonly see community clouds is if you have several entities or several organizations that have the same interests, for example, their partners, and usually for the purposes of cost savings or interoperability of systems uh, or sharing of resources, uh, the organizations get together and they establish a community cloud for themselves. In a hybrid cloud model, an organization can use um, any combination of the other uh, cloud architectures. So for example, a life sciences company could have a private cloud where they store their um, regulated data that needs a lot more protection. Um, and they could have a, a community or a public cloud that they're doing all of their R&D work in. So to summarize what we talked about in this part of the presentation, is we've pretty much defined what cloud technology is and what we mean when we say cloud. We talked about the five characteristics, which are broad network access, rapid elasticity, measured service, on-demand self-service, and uh, resource pooling. We talked about the three service models, software, platform, and infrastructure as a service, and the four deployment models, public, private, community, and hybrid. In the next part of our presentation, we're going to discuss what an organization needs to consider when evaluating whether or not a cloud solution makes sense for them. And there's no one-size-fits-all solution. Uh, there are quite a few things to consider. So join us back here, and we'll explore what those things are. Thank you for your interest in our cloud computing presentation. 
We started Globio because we saw a lot of inefficiencies and waste in the industry. We exist to help make FDA compliance efficient and to lower costs. Our core value is value through innovation, and we not only believe it, we live it. Please contact us today and see how we can help you. Thank you.